what do you do when you're frustrated or angry? Headshot. Headshot. Do you like to let off steam? Ultra kill. We fight and take it. Monster kill. Ludicrous kill. Do you do this by fragging your friends? Well, first off, you should be nicer to your friends. Second off, I had the perfect game for you if you do like doing that. Let me introduce you to Unreal Tournament. Wait a minute. Hang on just a second here. You mean to tell me there is no way to purchase the Unreal games anymore? The Unreal games have been sitting on Steam and other platforms for many years now. I bought my Unreal games back in 2009 through Steam through a bundle called the Unreal Deal. And that's how I acquired every single Unreal game. And for whatever reason, Epic decided to pull these games off Steam and anywhere else that you could acquire them, which I don't understand because they have been sitting there for years. I don't, I can't find any reason online to understand why Epic would do this. So the company that's made over $20 billion on Fortnite and has made other countless millions, probably billions actually on the Unreal Engine, which is the entire engine that's named after those games that they have been selling since all the way back then is no longer selling or giving you a way to acquire one of the most important game franchises in history a game franchise that helps set standards for pc gaming all the way back in the day okay that does make me really angry because there's no reason for this epic never really gave any real reason for it and i almost feel like they don't want to be associated with the unreal games or something anymore and i don't understand how they could want to do this because there are so many people that still appreciate the Unreal games because they're very important. And yet, they give us no other way to acquire these games other than putting on an eye patch and a peg leg. On some level, I can maybe understand console games disappearing off the market just because when you make a new console, sometimes it's not compatible with the previous generation. And while I don't agree with that method, at the very least, there is some understanding as to how that can happen. But there's no understanding when a game has been sitting on a store that you own the license to because you created it and you still have the license to so there's no licensing issues whatsoever and you just rip it off the store for no reason other than what you don't want fans playing your game anymore it doesn't make any sense to me but that's okay in the interest of game preservation because that's what i do that's what this channel is honestly about at this point is preserving lost games or maybe just media in general but the most important thing to me here is making sure that people can still play the things they love, even if it wasn't something I cared about. But I will tell you this right now, I care about Unreal. I grew up playing this game, and I love these games. I will not let these games go. Epic's done a lot of shitty things in the last few years, and I don't care for Fortnite. It's okay if you do, I'm not judging you. I just, Battle Royales are not my thing, and I've never been interested in them. The arena shooter genre has been kind of dead for years now and something I definitely am upset about in some way. But the fact is, they're making it even harder to still enjoy arena shooters, especially one of the most important ones, if not the most important one of all time. So first things first, let's say you don't have access to Unreal through any means because you didn't buy a license back in the day. Well, we can't condone piracy here because of YouTube's you know, um, important rules. And of course, I don't personally condone piracy. I would never do that. Piracy is wrong, kids. But you know, you can get the Unreal games through Internet Archive and you can still play them online even through that method. So I'm going to use Unreal Tournament 2004 because it's my personal favorite, so we'll talk about that one exclusively, but the same thing kind of applies to all of them. If you are trying to acquire them and you don't have the money to drop on eBay, uh, just understand that there are ways to go through the Internet Archive and that is something you can do. To be clear, I will not be linking anything to the Internet Archive where you can acquire a copy because I can't, you know, condone piracy due to YouTube's uh, terms and services, but I will be talking about how you can make Unreal Tournament 2004 work on a modern PC and how to actually get it up and running online functionality. So first things first, once you get the game updated and installed on your computer, keep in mind that Unreal Tournament does run on modern computers without a problem, it just won't run at upscaled resolution, which may be causing problems for some people. It did kind of bother me, so obviously I wanted to find a way to fix it, and there is a fix. 
It's not the easiest widescreen patch in the world, but it is very simple once you know what you're doing. So I'll show you how to do that. First, you'll need to go to GitHub and I'll provide the link to where you need to get this fix for in the description. The GitHub link will allow you to download the widescreen fix. You'll want to unzip that file into your Unreal install directory. Once you do that, you're going to have to mess around with a couple of configuration files and I'm going to show you exactly where that is. You're going to need to open up the user.ini, but that can be opened up with a notepad if it isn't marked to be opened up with notepad you can go ahead and use notepad to open it up once you're prompted with it once you get in there you're going to look for two lines there are two lines inside this entire ini file and the line you're looking for is input class equal class engine dot player input and you're going to replace it with the two lines in the readme i will also post these lines in the description if it makes it easier for you so again there should be two lines with that wording that need to be replaced and one of them will be under x game dot x player so that might help you find less location. Once you replace both of these, you're probably gonna have to open up another INI file and actually change the resolution, and I'll show you where to go for that. So on the next location, you're gonna find another .ini file. This time it's gonna be called UT2004. It'll be in the same folder where you found the user.ini. In the UT2004 INI, you're gonna look for two things that we need to change. So the first one is you're gonna to need to look for the resolution. For the resolution, just look for windrv.windowsclient and you'll just need to change it where it says full screen viewport. So for example, if you have a 1920 by 1080 monitor, and for the X, you'll put 1920, and then for the Y, you'll put 1080. Finally, you just need to make one more change in this file and that's going to be looking for the server information so you can actually connect to online servers. So what we're looking for is a section that says itdrv.masterserverlink. So what we're gonna do is remove the section that says epicgames.com, so the master server list that's going to epicgames.com. And we're gonna change it to address to be utmaster.openspy.net and change the port over to 28. 902. I will be posting this in the description as well so you can easily copy and paste that. So once you've done that, you can save that, close everything out, and go ahead and launch the game. And you should be able to play the game in full resolution. You can make any changes to the graphics that you need to make once you get inside the game, but you'll also be able to play online. So you should be able to experience the game in modern terms. Just keep in mind, a lot of servers when you join them are probably going to download assets to you. And that's because they have some kind of custom maps or other content in them. So just kind of keep that in mind when you start playing. Final note is that the online can be sporadic if you're gonna find players or not. There's usually some players online on some servers. You'll just have to kind of look around. But if you're looking for a more organized group, you'll wanna check out the discords that are located at the UT 2004 serverlist.com website as they'll have access to more organized events for when people are playing. I noticed that the most of the game modes that were being played were modded game modes and not really the classic modes. I only found about one online game of a classic mode on there, so just kind of keep that in mind. If you want to play classic Unreal Online, you're going to need to either get a group of friends together or you're going to need to go on the Discord and see when they're actually doing an event. And one last final note, if for some reason the version of the game that you found doesn't have the most recent update, I have also posted a link in the description where you can download that update. With that tutorial out of the way on how to actually play Unreal Tournament in a modern setting, I do want to ask you guys if you could please subscribe if you liked the video or this was helpful to you so far. Just because I'm trying to get to 500 subscribers and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much. Second off, I really want to complain about this for a few minutes before I end the video. What is it that is completely driving companies like this to just remove the ability to buy and play their games? I don't really understand it. I can kind of understand if you're trying to shut down servers that you have to pay for and maintain. But with Unreal, player servers have been where it's at for many, many years now. Like, pretty much the entire lifespan of the game, player servers were always preferred probably over the official ones for the most part anyhow. Because of custom content and of course, the ability to have maybe more active admins. It's just very frustrating that we live in a time where history is being erased in front of our eyes and we probably can't do anything about it but try to hoard a bunch of data in hopes that our hard drives live long enough to keep this alive long maybe past our own lives. The thing is, is we're watching things like the Internet Archive struggle to stay alive. Someday in the near future, I don't know if the Internet Archive will be around anymore. 
and then all that data that they've saved for us to help us still see the things that we no longer have access to such as the Wayback Machine or files that can't be acquired anywhere else will just be gone. Of course there are people who are doing everything they can to try to save files from these websites so in case they do go down they will go out and you know, repost them but the thing is that the Internet Archive is, for the most part, an extremely safe website to download from. It's a trusted place to go. Without a safe space, people are going to have to go and risk their computers or their personal information in order to try to reserve or save some of this data that's being lost to us. So every time someone like Epic takes away our ability to actually purchase these things, all they're doing is making it so much harder for their customers to actually buy their products and then they have to go to other shadier parts of the internet and try to acquire it that way and then they're going to get mad at you for going through a piracy route and even if epic doesn't care about the piracy themselves the point is that piracy shouldn't be a necessary thing but it is and even if i believe that companies should maybe offer certain data they no longer care about for free such as Unreal. They already give away free games on the Epic Store. Why couldn't they just give away the Unreal Collection for free? Might as well. I don't care that I paid for it all those years ago. But the lack of care for preserving such wonderful pieces of art, and yes I say art because I do think games are an art form, and allowing it to just fester and die when it is one of the most important gaming franchises ever. And on top of that, the only reason Epic is even successful is because of their Unreal Engine and the fact that they made these Unreal games that were popular with the PC crowd that pushed graphics and physics. So I I cannot fathom for the life of me why they don't care about their own history. Look, I'm not going to sit here and beat the ever-living hell out of this horse, but even though I want to, honestly. All I'm going to say is this is unacceptable and I really hope these practices change in the near future. Because things like the crew no longer being available to people that purchased it or games like older MMOs not having their source code available to players to actually make their own servers with. I think if you purchase anything, regardless of any kind of expectation from the developer side or the publisher side, I believe that that data belongs to you and you should be able to use it however you see fit and you should be able to run your own servers and be able to play your favorite game for as long as you freaking want to. If you want to play that damn thing all the way into your nursing home days, you should be able to do that. But that's just me, and I'm an extremist, I guess. So anyway, thanks for listening to me rant. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching.